Welcome to Statics. Moment of Inertia by Integration We are returning to Moments of Inertia to look at a more general form for finding them using integration. As previously mentioned, the moment of inertia about an x-direction axis, denoted with an uppercase i sub x, is approximately equal to its area times a y-direction dimension squared. Likewise, the moment of inertia about a y-direction axis is approximately equal to its area times an x-direction dimension squared. The general form for computing the moment of inertia about an x-direction axis is the integral of y squared dA over the area. The general form for computing the moment of inertia about a y-direction axis is the integral of x squared dA over the area. The y variable is the distance of the differential element dA from the x-axis. The x variable is the distance of the differential element dA from the y-axis. Let's use them in a simple example. Let's use integration to verify the equations for the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its centroid and about its base. First, moment of inertia about the centroid. I begin by setting up an axis system with the origin at the centroid of the rectangle. The equation we will use is i sub x is equal to the integral over the area of y squared dA. Let's next identify a differential element. I will orient my element parallel to the axis of interest, so it will have a base dimension of b and a height of dy. So the area of my differential element, dA, is b times dy. I substitute that into my equation. Now b is a constant, so we can pull it outside of the integral. Let's think about our integration limits. Here is the distance y to our element. We want to add up all the elements from the bottom of the rectangle to the top of the rectangle. So from y equals negative h over 2 to positive h over 2. Now I integrate and simplify. I get 1 over 12 times the base times the height cubed. This is the formula we have already seen for the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its centroidal axis. Now I will repeat the procedure, except this time I will find the moment of inertia about the x-axis located at its base. Again, here is our equation. I define a differential element parallel to my axis of interest with an area dA equal to b times dy. I substitute that into my integral. The b dimension is a constant and will come out of the integral. Here is the y distance to the differential element. We want to add up elements from y equal to 0 to y equals h. So those become the limits of integration. I integrate the expression and simplify to get one third base times height cubed. This is the same answer we got when we used the parallel axis theorem previously.